we'll go ahead and get started. And you never know how many people are actually going to show up. There were nine people that that that's that that registered for today, but uh, some sometimes they show up and sometimes they don't. So. <laughs> uh, so my name is John Owens. I'm the managing director for Confirm Not Conform, and I also serve as uh, a, an associate clergy for St. John's in Oakland, who was the developer of this curriculum. Uh, I did not, I always start off and say, I did not write this curriculum, uh, but I did inherit it from my from my boss and our youth minister. And, um, and uh, so I'm really excited to Day, uh, to talk a little bit more about how to do this online, because I know that's a big question, especially with ri it rises in cases we don't know if the church is going with <laughs> which direction these days. So, um, so have, having that uh, uh, as an option. And so I just kind of want to see uh, who all's here. And if you could say who you are, what church you're from, where your church is, and what denomination you're a part of. And I'll just start off, uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll just call you all one by one, but uh, we'll start off with Anna Marie. Hi, um, I'm with Church of the Epiphany in San Carlos. I'm the associate for Youth and Families. Um, I've been here two months, two and a half, I guess, and um, I'm Episcopalian. Awesome. Judy. Um, I'm from St. John's. Episcopal in uh, North Guilford, Connecticut, and I am or have been for several years the uh, Christian formation for youth um, in our parish, and I'm now just starting our, you know, the confirmation classes, and uh, our priest just left, so I we're trying to figure out how to do this <laughs> uh, with you guys. All right, great, and Lori. Hi, I'm Lori Kim. I'm from uh, Trinity United Methodist Church in Richmond Hill, Queens, New York, and I'm the resident uh, Sunday school teacher. I have been since I was confirmed myself, and the pastor wanted me to join you and, you know, see if uh, this was a program that we'd be able to use. So thank you for this. Yes, that's great. Great. Yeah. So CNC, we, we have uh, Episcopal, Lutheran, Presbyterian, United Church of Christ, and uh, Methodist is, is what we what we run as far as our, our um, uh, different denominations and curriculum. Um, my next question for y'all is: Are y'all currently using CNC, uh, or is this completely a new thing for y'all? I just ordered it, and I read, okay, all I, read right. through, I read through your samples, and I and I ordered it, and I did do one class. Um, so I have some questions about, you know, what we're. Okay. All right. Um, my congregation has used it in the past. Um, we're doing a collaborative, like mid peninsula confirmation group. Um, and so I'm looking at this and um, some of the J2A related stuff. Okay. All right. And Lori. Uh we have a really small Sunday school, so our children, including my son, who's now 13, was uh, a member of the church since birth. <laughs> so this is our first confirmation class in forever. Um, I've never used this program before, but I'm eager to see what, what we can do with it. All right. All right. Great. So uh, just to kind of give you some CNC basics, because these are common questions that, that I've been getting in some of the other sessions I've done. So I'll just go ahead and kind of knock those out of the way. Uh, you know, um, something that may make it a little bit different, say, compared to J2A uh, is um, one, one the cost. Uh, we only do a one-time licensing fee, and then after that, it, the, the curriculum is yours, so there, you don't have to pay an annual fee with, with us. So that, that, that's one thing we try to make it very cost-effective to, to use. Um, number two, the next, second question I get a lot is about mentors and what do you do with mentors? Um, ex uh, so especially uh, especially with the online environment, um, what I've suggested, if you're going to attempt to do this online, um, you don't want to, you, you don't, unless you, it, unless you have a very large class or something, you don't, sometimes it's hard to, to facilitate things if you have a lot of people on Zoom. So I recommend uh, putting your in-person gatherings more with the mentors, unless you wanna make use of breakout rooms. Uh, if you do breakout rooms to be able to give some time to talk, 
then that could be a component of it. Uh, or if you want to group, group them in smaller groups, if you have enough youth to do that, uh, then that then you might then you'd want some, maybe a mentor or two to kind of help facilitate those conversations. And so that might be ways to bring in the mentors. But if it but but if it's a very small group, it might be better just to, to have one or two adults max just to kind of keep control of the group. But then so it really I'm going to say it probably depends on the size of your group. Now, our online version is not a complete online version. In other words, we didn't do all our modules and to make it a complete online course because uh, uh, the uh, CNC felt like it was important for youth to still have that in-person gathering experience. So what we did was we created a hybrid, taking 10 of our modules and making it online version. There are 20 modules in, 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 in the youth version plus a retreat. So we took 10, we, and the 10 we chose were were modules that were not specific to a denomination. So there are four lessons specific in every, uh, every uh, within every packet that's specifically, uh, specific to your denomination. Um, and then the rest of it is kind of generic. Like we can still, as Methodists or Episcopalians or Presbyterians, we can still kind of talk about the Bible in the same way. We still know the Nicene Creed still developed the same way. So those modules didn't really have to change, you know. And so what we did was we and we took the and the content is still the same when you do whether you do online or in person. But, but what we did was we changed up some of those activities to make them online based because obviously you're not going to have um, paper in front of you necessarily. And so that's what we did with the online version was using technology to help uh, do some of that engagement work. Um, and so I those have, are- I have just yeah. one question while you're on it. Mm -hmm. unless, unless you want me to wait, I can wait. No, go ahead, go ahead. No, we have um, six um, preteen and teens. Um, and there's only, I'm asked, the question is about the mentors. Does each person need to have a mentor? Can, can, in other words, can there be like three mentors for six kids? As long as they do, you know, privately, they discuss things or does it need to be six different people? Because we have a small congregation and, you know, these kids don't know everyone well enough to feel comfortable with a, mm -hmm. a person they don't know at all or, there's very few options, you know, for them to feel that, oh, I want this person as a mentor or they can't do it. That person wasn't able to do it or something. So I'm just wondering how that has worked and, you know, how you approach a person um, to ask them in just general terms or is there a way that you've done? Sure. Um, so you can actually do it a couple of ways. I mean, we encourage one-to-one -one because it really is kind of that relationship uh, thing in 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 the question is how much work do you want uh, do you want to have your volunteers do and it's it's really CNC is meant to be a congregational development tool so don't think of it just as a tool just for your youth it's also it's also uh, developing your adults while they're doing this program along with you so think about that if you can get it and I wouldn't worry if they don't know know the adults yet because that's part of it they're going to get to know the people that are willing to, to to volunteer their time to be mentors mm -hmm. uh and and you know but if you can't get it then yes it's probably uh the 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 better alternative is to have one mentor to three if you can't absolutely get enough adults uh involved in it um and and you know one of the things we we do um at St. John's is is we try to look at it as um we, we do a little bit of, we, we really try to do some, some pairings to, to knowing our youth and, and, and trying to find the right adult. For example, um, for example, say uh, you have that youth that just came out and, and they're LGBT uh, uh, and wouldn't it be great to find them another LGBT person in your parish to kind of help build that mentoring relationship as they're struggling and having those questions. And then they have the spiritual relationship as well with this person. So, you know, there, there's ways to kind of also think about how you pair the mentors too that I want to encourage because that's going to add some of that, those strengths and some of those bonds as well. Um, uh, and, and that's what we, we did. That's what we're thinking of. You know, we asked the kids at first, who do you think would be, you would feel 
uh, comfortable with in this situation or that you want to know better um, in general, because if adult says they're going, they're willing to do it, then they're obviously up for the challenge and, and, you know, are, are comfortable enough to feel that they can uh, work mm -hmm. with one of the teens. Mm -hmm. so, and yeah. And isn't it flattering whenever a teenager actually asks you to be their mentor? I think that's pretty flattering. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's incentive enough for some people. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. And any other questions around mentors before we, we move on? All right. So what I want to do today is I'm going to take us through a session and a, a typical session and then uh, but also kind of stop and talk about what it looks like on my end or, or on a, as a facilitator's end of, of doing this. And so every, every session you have a, a packet of information. Um, and then at the end of the packet, you also have, um, you have session materials that you would normally hand out in person. Uh, not as much important. You're not going to see as much of that unless it needs to be emailed in advance for online. Uh, the, uh, just because, again, uh, you're, you're doing an online experience, but in person, usually you would have printouts that you would give. Uh, there, there, there usually is homework involved in each session. The homework isn't something that's going to take hours and hours. It's, you know, I mean, the I, I get that question, how important is the homework? And I guess the, how important is the homework is how important you want to make the homework. But you're trying to give uh, uh, your youth a chance to, to spend some time reflecting on an experience or getting to know something. You're going to have some youth that, that are going to actually do it. You're going to have some youth that are going to rush 10 minutes before the next class. That's just the reality. <laughs> and you have some youth that, oh, I didn't get around to it. I mean, and, and so, you know, the, the goal is really, um, you know, to encourage it. Uh, can remember that confirm not conform is not about uh, uh, getting our youth to conform to an idea, but confirming that they really want to believe this stuff themselves and asking them the challenge of what they believe. And, and that's that's the whole premise of the program is, is to give that critical thinking skills that that and, and, and engage our youth into those conversations. Uh, and and a, a, an example, especially today when we have a lot of youth that are in the spiritual category or they're automatically atheist or you get a lot of that with teenagers today. And uh, and I think what CNC does is it helps them ask the questions. Well, what is it you believe? Even if you're atheist, you have some sort of belief system. What is that belief system? And it may be that, like, for example, one story I heard was um, a youth talking about, uh, we, we, we asked, uh, asked them, what do you do when you get up in the morning? Well, I get up, I spend, I, I, I get up and I start doing my hair and blah, blah, blah. Well, how long does it take you to do your hair? Well, this person spends like an hour on their hair in the morning or more. And I'm like, oh, that's interesting. It takes you an hour to do your hair. Why does it take you an hour to do your hair? Well, I, you know, and they start talking about what that means to them or something. I go, that's a belief system as an example. And so, so helping them call that stuff out because sometimes that they're just quick to answer, but they haven't really quite quite ask the right questions or really thought through the right questions. And so that's what I think CNC does is it helps us kind of learn the terminology, figure it out and figure out what we believe. Um, so today we're gonna do the module Heretics or Us. Are we, are we good with being heretics today? All right, all right, sounds fun. Okay, so uh, what happens is there's usually a gathering at the beginning and uh, and so that's kind of like your icebreaker. And so what I'm going to do for our icebreaker is uh, to kind of demonstrate how we can do this on uh, technology. Is I'm gonna I'm gonna post a link in the chat, and I'm using technology called Mentimeter. And so I'm going to ask you to go and fill in those questions. So if you can just click the link in the chat and answer those questions, I'll give you a couple minutes. Um, Mentimeter, I, I like because it, it, it's it's just a little bit more fun, a little bit more picturesque. You, you can do you can use other tools if you prefer. I mean, Zoom has its own uh, uh, polling that you can do. Um, I just find Mentimeter is a little bit more fun. Uh, your youth are probably already going to be familiar with this technology. Uh, this is this is what a lot of school teachers were using uh, if your if your kids were doing online school. 
Uh, that's one of the things that we did uh, while developing the online is we actually had school teachers come in and help us uh, redevelop some of these modules. So we knew exactly what they were using in the classrooms and, and, and trying to make that uh, friendly so in in so if you don't know the software the good news is you probably can ask one of your one of your kids and they're probably going to be able to explain how to use it if you don't if you if you can't figure something out so uh give me one second i'm going to pull up the results based on uh what y'all have said so uh let me do a share screen here and this is what y'all said. Uh, most of y'all have said you've had a good day. Uh, a few of you agree almost with everything your parents have said. Uh, some of y'all more so agree with what your friends say. Uh, uh, pretty much we all like to do new things. Uh, not only a few of us like things to be the same and we all like vegetables that's good vegetables are healthy um so that's one way to do it i'll, I'll i'm going to pull up here um another uh mentimeter just to show you a, another quick example of something else i've done uh with one of these modules and uh i did i so when you're doing the uh kind of going over the uh, uh nicene creed for example uh, one of the uh, things you do is you have them evaluate what the creed looks like or them or what they believe. And so you go by each statement. And so you can, again, do this online. And it looks, again, like this, same thing. You, they do a scale, you know, I believe in God. How, well, how much do they believe in God? How much do they believe in Jesus Christ? Um, and so going through all those different statements. Um, and the good news, and, and there actually is a, um, hold on, there is a second slide to this. And see, the great thing about Mentimeter is when you do it, uh, you, can, you can also customize it. See, that's a picture of St. John's right there. So um, so you can customize it. You can, you can put your own youth photos in it, personalize it. So make it more fun, uh, have whatever or meaningful uh, to your group. That's, that, that, that's, again, part of the reason why I like this software. Uh, and if you're curious who answered these questions, this was the CNC board. That's what we did as our, at our last board meeting as an exercise. Um, so you, you would do a gathering uh, like so. And, and then the gatherings are always going to be different. It's not always going to be meant to meter. Uh, it's meant to have different experiences. And so, uh, so now we're going to just, I'm just going to ask you a couple questions. There's a lot of different discussions, uh, discussions and different activities that are are linked. They'll give you kind of a time uh, a time link in the uh, the the sessions. Um, so one of the things you'll see at the beginning of each module, there will be a theological statement. You can read the statement aloud. Sometimes I I, I like to read it just kind of as a preface to say, hey, this is what we're going to cover today. You can choose it as just your your frame of mind, however you want to do it. So there's a theological statement. There's also a breakdown of timelines. You can choose to do these in hour links, and it'll tell you what to use. What, what 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 we recommend to do if you want to do this in an hour or if you prefer to, to, to an hour and a half and then you know give you the kind of LinkedIn version so you do what works for you the best so we're going to start off with the discussion uh what is heresy and so I'm going to ask you uh do you uh you put, uh, put your thumbs up if you think that the earth goes around the sun All right, all right. You can also use reactions if you prefer to use reactions. Um, do you think democracy is a good thing? All right. Do do you think slavery is a bad thing? All right. Do you think people should be allowed to pick who they want to marry? All right. And do you think women should be allowed to be teachers? All right, okay. Well, if you've agreed to any of those things, then congratulations, at one time, you would have been called a heretic. So, uh, shocking, right? 
So I have a question for you, and I'll just throw this out. You can kind of answer popcorn style uh, as I throw out some of these questions. And when I throw out these questions, the good news is all your questions are laid out in a grid format for you. Uh, there's a discussion question, there's a potential follow-up question, especially if you get that silence and doesn't seem like they're quite getting the question. There's some facilitator notes about each question. So there's ways to kind of help you kind of frame things the way you want. So my first question for you is, what is a heretic and what do, or what does the word heretic mean? Feel free to answer. Someone who has an unorthodox belief. Okay, someone who has an unorthodox belief. All right. And so if that's a heretic, how would you define the word heresy? A belief that falls out of the acceptable norms of Christian faith. Okay, okay. All right. And can someone else give me an example of what heresy? What is... I mean, it's it's something that you are. It's how it's a um, way you act. It's a it's an action that you're taking, and a belief system that you're using to take that action. And it to me, it being a heretic doesn't necessarily mean that um, you are doing something, doing some terrible thing. It's just that you're against the system. Oh, very good. Against the system. I like that. The system, so, the system thinks you're a heretic, but, uh -huh. you, but you aren't, but you yourself don't believe you are, you know, or, yeah, maybe, yeah. or maybe you do. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. And that's actually my next question. So what makes something a heresy and not just something I disagree with? Usually some dude with authority has said so. Some dude with authority has said so. Okay, yep, yeah, I can go with that. And uh, now, now the question is, who gets upset when there's heresy involved? The people in control who have the people, power. The people in power. Okay, great, great. And why do people get upset when they encounter something they think is heresy? They're rocking the boat. Rocking the boat, rocking the boat. We're good. <laughs> and, and so... Uh, so what do you think makes heresy dangerous? I, well, I don't want to keep saying anything, but so please cut me off. But I think it's just, it's just that again, you're rocking the boat, you're changing the rules. You're not following the rules. You're not, you're not being like everybody else. You don't belong. You're doing something unusual if you're if you're protesting something actually going in the streets and doing or if you're writing uh, petitions and you're passing petitions around and people said oh no this is this is not a good thing mm -hmm. we just had that happen in our town again you know over some issues with education the hot hot subject and someone wrote a letter to the editor that said this is heresy <laughs> <laughs> so 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 heretics challenge the system and 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 it can bring forth change correct all right and and i got a question how can how can heretics harm society what would be an example or do they have the potential to harm society depending on how things are structured it can destabilize the social order. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right, right. Because uh, it interrupts power, yeah. right? And it, but on the flip side of that, how can it contribute to society? Can make more space for people, for more make people. More... Right, right. So there could, so that, so it can kind of go both ways in, in, in how it, how it works, right? So. Um, uh, there's uh, an essay that uh, titled Optimism by, by Helen Keller, and she wrote, the heresy of one age becomes the orthodoxy of the next. She also wrote, the test of all beliefs is their practical effect in life, that they may be, be the best way to determine if a heresy is beneficial or harmful. 
So when when you hear that, what what are some ideas that come to mind when you when you when as you think about the word heresy? Any any ideas? I'm just trying to think of um, only because something to do with politics at the moment because it was discussion we had earlier today. You know, change. I think, especially in politics or, or other anything, really, it doesn't matter your family, whatever. It's it's a change that disrupts um, the norm and becomes um, scary for people uh, in general. And it can be harmful if it goes if it goes to the point where it's too far over, become violent in whether verbally or physically or you know any way to harm people and not include them in the discussion. Um, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. Those yeah. kind of things. Yeah. So what I want to do in our next kind of segment of our discussion is we're going to talk about Jesus the heretic. How many of y'all thought about Jesus as a heretic? Um, so I'm <laughs> a couple of y'all. Okay. All right. So uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, uh, bring up a um, uh, a slide here. And hold on, I got the wrong PowerPoint. Uh, so I'm going to I'm going to put up a a Hold on, that's, um, sorry about that. Let me, actually, I'm going to show you one thing real quick, uh, just so you can kind of see the layout while I'm doing this. Um, uh, so when you, um, When you, when you go to download materials for CNC, uh, it comes in a folder that looks like this. And, and I'll show you, especially when you're on the online version. So you can see the online packet is, uh, has, the, has, the, uh, uh, has all the modules that are meant uh, to have the uh, have. So you have all your PDFs. So you can see like here, if I, if I pull it up, uh, this will open up a PDF of the um, uh, facilitator's guide. Also in the modules uh, for the online version, you also have all these different PowerPoints here. And the and so, so that's the great news is there's a PowerPoint already loaded for you. Um, so, uh, and then with, with the PowerPoints, there are... Uh, uh, it, it, it'll open up to something that kind of looks like this and you can customize it however you want. Um, and so the first thing is always going to be your rules of the road. That's your group norms that you've established. Uh, and anyway, so, so, so just note that the, that's also a part of the online edition. Um, and so what I want to do now is we're going to read uh, the source of pollution and uh, Judy, if you'd be willing to be our narrator, Anna Marie, if you would be our Pharisees and religion scholars, and Lori, if you'll be Jesus, that would be great. And I'll be the people. I think there's a section for the people in there. And uh, go from there. So we'll read it. I've got to unmute myself here. Um, the Pharisees, along with some religion scholars who had come from Jerusalem, gathered around Jesus. They noticed that some of his disciples weren't being careful with ritual washings before meals. The Pharisees, Jews in general, in fact, would never eat a meal without going through the motions of a ritual hand washing with an especially vigorous scrubbing if they had just come from the market. To say nothing of the scourings, they give jugs, pots, and pans. Why do your disciples flout the rules showing up at meals without washing their hands? These people make Isaiah, a bit. Oh, sorry. Sorry, you cut Jesus. I cut Isaiah was <laughs> Isaiah was right about frauds like you. Hit the bullseye, in fact. These people make a big show of saying the right thing, but their heart isn't in it. They act like they're worshiping me, but they don't mean it. They just use me as a cover for teaching whatever suits their fancy. 
ditching God's command and taking up the latest fads. Well, good for you. You get rid of God's command so you won't be inconvenienced in following the religious fashions. Moses said, respect your father and mother, and anyone denouncing father or mother should be killed. But you weasel out of that by saying that it's perfectly acceptable to say father or mother, gift, what I owed you, I've given as a gift to God, thus relieving yourselves of obligation to father or mother. You scratch out God's word and scrawl a whim in its place. You do a lot of things like this. Listen now, all of you, take this to heart. It's not what you swallow that pollutes your life. It's what you vomit. That's the real pollution. Disciples, oh, sorry. Uh, oh, oh. Sorry, I'll, I'll read that... disciples for you. We all don't right. get it. Put it in plain language. Are you being willfully stupid? I'm sorry. Do you, don't you see that what you swallow can't contaminate you? It doesn't enter your heart, but your stomach works its way through the intestines and is finally flushed. That took care of dietary quibbling. Jesus was saying that all that all foods are fit to eat. Go ahead, it's Jesus. What comes, it's what comes out of a person that pollutes obscenities, lust, theft, murders, adulteries, greed, depravity, deceptive dealings, carousing, mean looks, slander, arrogance, foolishness. All these are vomit from the heart. There's the source of your pollution. All right, and who doesn't like the message? That's a, that's always a great uh, version to use with youth. Um, so uh, with that, uh, my question is for you, what is Jesus's error according to the Pharisees? He's not preparing himself ritually to eat. Okay, he's not preparing himself ritually. And what is the Pharisees' Uh, error according to Jesus. That their their rules are not necessarily God's rules. And you know, they're they're requiring people to do things for themselves for them actually more than for God. Mm -hmm. And then we have the disciples in the middle of everywhere. And why do you think they're confused? <laughs> they're getting too contradicting <laughs> contradicting people here mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so what would happen to the pharisees if jesus is right and they are wrong I think they lose their it. position in society might shift or diminish Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, you know, I mean, we've got at this point, we've got a lot of people following Jesus these days and really listening to what he's saying. And if he says something again, that's a little bit different. All right. Um, so the my next question for you is, is what Jesus saying heresy? Or how does what Jesus say change things for them? I think they think it's heresy. I think that the Jesus again is trying to change the rules according to the Pharisees. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what would make what would make one person think about what Jesus did or said was a heresy, and another person think it wasn't? who they decided they were going to accept as an authority. Right, right. So if you if you favor the Pharisees, then absolutely he's a heretic. If you didn't favor the Pharisees and you favor Jesus, then really the, maybe the Pharisees were the heretics. Um, uh, so I'm going to leave you to be judged for this last question. Was Jesus a heretic? Why or why not? Totally. Totally, why? Uh, because he changed the way he was going against the religious authorities of his day. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Very true. Very true. And so that's going to lead us to our next uh, activity. Uh, so I'm going to uh, talk about this man right here.
Does anybody know who that who this is a picture of by any chance? Heschel? This would be Galileo. All right. So we have Galileo here. And um uh so uh Galileo was a scientist who supported the idea that the Earth orbited around the sun at a time when the people believed the sun and all other planets orbited around the Earth. Because of his belief, Galileo was found vehemently suspect of heresy, quote unquote, by the church and kept under house arrest for the rest of his life. Believing the Earth orbited the sun was considered the heresy because the Bible says in Psalm 96, chapter 10, the world is firmly established and it shall never be moved. So heretics don't have to be religious or fighting against religious authority. There are heretics in the fields of health, education, environment, and many more. There are lots of heretics throughout histories. Some have changed the way we do think some are still in trouble. On some, the jury is still out. So for the next few minutes, uh, what, what I would do with uh, the youth here is uh, the instructions here would say to lead them through a reflection uh, and have them reflect on their favorite heretic, a person, a person who challenges conventional wisdom and gets in trouble with authority. Uh, and so uh, the, the person can be famous or not, could be someone from history or someone from today. Uh, the heresy doesn't have to be, again, religious. It can be anything. For example, what are some of the heresies in the music you listen to, the, the things you just don't do? Um, or what about the sports you play or watch or in some of your classes? You don't even have to know the name of your heretic. You can pick as your favorite heretic the person who invented the skateboard for example, or it just needs to be a heretic or a heresy that is significant for you. Uh, and so it, uh, we're not going to quite quote, uh, spend all this time because we're, we're limited on time, but you can see where this would go and you spend a couple minutes, they would think about it, and then you would have uh, them come back and share who their favorite heretic is and why, uh, kind of uh, building on that kind of theme. Um, uh, giving them about three or four minutes to, to kind of contem do, do a contemplation of that. And then it asks us to spend 10 minutes to do a presentation, which of course we'll skip today because we're not going to do this activity. And then we go into the next uh, 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 discussion. And then the next discussion is, uh, is would be the final discussion. Um, so we'll go ahead and kind of do that. So far, we've been talking about heresies in terms of actions that don't fit in their times or go against conventional thinking. However, the word heresy literally means choice. Everyone is a heretic by virtue of the fact that each of us makes choices. Our culture is particularly prone to heresy. We choose where we live, our college major, our career, whom we marry, how many children we want to have, and many more. Although there are a lot of things we do not choose, such as our family or where we were born, there are still a lot of choices that we face all the time. Uh, one of those things we're asking for you to do in this program, and you'll be asked to do more and more as time goes on, is to make choices. And so for our last discussion, we're just gonna talk about choice making. And so my first question is, what is something you have done that you are proud of? Could be this week, it could be whatever. I think I, for me, I just, uh, I made a choice to take care of myself that I'm proud of because it was a difficult choice. Um, I actually had I had a class reunion I was supposed to go to this weekend, but because of um, our family situation and, and partly because of the COVID, um, I chose not to participate. We participated by Zoom with parts of it, but I chose not to physically participate. And it may not sound like a hard decision to some people, but I, 
it was very hard for me. And I'm proud that I actually was able to do it. And I felt my heartstrings <laughs> wanting to see people, but. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's good. It's, and it's good to have self care and in those situations and, and, and to a, a, you know, especially when we're, we're dealing with family dynamics and all sorts of stuff. Yeah. And Marie, you have something you're proud of? I moved this week. Um, uh, which was a lot of work and exhausting. I've not unpacked, but I moved. Um, my stuff has been in storage for five years since I went to seminary. And um, so I'm proud to be, have found a place and I can afford it. And um, yeah. in, the Bay, in, in the Bay Area, that's no small feat. <laughs> yeah, my, my bathroom is significantly older than I am. <laughs> and um it is pale gray and the color of cooked salmon <laughs> uh, well, well, and so my this. my sister um found me a shower curtain that kind of pulls it together and redeems it and takes it in another direction but but god is good <laughs> <laughs> you know you know one of the things i always say about moving because it isn't a small feat is, is i always look at Think of every box you unpack as kind of like opening a new gift. <laughs> well, I have forgotten what I own. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so see, it's all new. It's all new. <laughs> ah. So what? Uh, so Lori, do you have something you're proud of this week or or all time? Um, I'm I'm gonna have to uh, piggyback off of something that Miss Judy said um, over the quarantine more as a stress relief i started running and i hated it in the beginning but it i really realized the health benefits of it and how much better i felt when i started running and this year i ran a 10k wow. last year i did a 5k that was my goal last year to run a 5k for for um a very um heartfelt charity that's very dear to me and then i ran a 10k this year so i'm i'm you know i'm grateful for the stamina and the strength that, that God has given me to do that. But also I'm, I'm proud of the benefits and the stick <laughs> yeah. for myself. That, that, that's phenomenal. And it takes so much discipline to be able to get in shape to do that kind of work. Yeah. Good for you. <laughs> Good for you. Thank you. Thank you. So, you know, so what choices did you make to accomplish this? Well, for me, it just started with getting off the couch. <laughs> that was a big choice. Um, mm -hmm. I started just walking every day just to clear my mind and kind of regain some, um, some I, I guess, some, some clarity because there was a lot going on in my head at the time. And eventually, it just became a conscious choice like and I started to feel bad if I didn't do it so the choice to you know put in the effort and put in the work and make sure I, I did it every day right right really and it. right and if, if you chose not to do it for a couple of days that backsliding it makes it harder in, in a situation like like running to do it to just go back to it right absolutely Absolutely. And then it becomes that it, it's, an, it's easier to break that cycle and just be lazy and go back on the couch. <laughs> so the choice to be mindful about it was a big deal, too. Yeah, yeah. Um, what, what, when, we, when we do these choices, that, uh, what do they say about what's important to us? I personally think a, a lot of time that I spent during the quarantine and during the pandemic made me change what was important to me. Um, taking more time to to focus on mindfulness and and uh, um, health, getting healthier, became more of a priority over. Hey, I missed my favorite episode of Big Brother this week, or. 
I'm babbling. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. It's it's perfect, you know, because again, you're 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 talking about your priorities, you know. I mean, like I said, you could easily backslid and start. I'm not going to run today. That's an hour I can go and start Netflixing or. You know, there's all those kind of things. Again, it shows into what your value is. Your value was to be healthy, uh, you know, and, and build that strength, build that endurance. Uh, and, and, and and what that says about you, right, in what, what you believe. I think that's very foundational. You know, as I, as I listen to this uh, way of um, conversation and helping helping people work out your choices and beliefs. Um, I can see how, how this is a very empowering for teens um, to be able to, and, and adults, but to be able to work through this way of think critical thinking so that you feel, you feel empowered and stronger as a person. You feel more confident. I actually have something I believe in where, you know, I, when I'm talking to the kids, they're, they usually say, well, I don't know, you know, I don't know what I believe in. I don't have any particular thing. Or they have some strong opinions on certain things. Mm -hmm. I just, yeah. I find this is very helpful that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so what has helped you make good choices? Or how do you know when you're making a positive choice? You're shaking your head, Anna. <laughs> well, you don't always know until later. Mm -hmm. um, so, so sometimes the fruits come later and you realize it. Sometimes you're like, well, this seemed like the best I could do at the time. Mm -hmm. um, my, my own struggle is with not deciding and procrastinating. So for me, not putting it off until later was, was the big thing. Mm -hmm. I know I'm a little off topic. Yeah, you're fine. You're fine. And and so the final last questions I have for this discussion is what choices do you have ahead of you? And what do you think you need in order to make these choices? I, so you, I, I go by experience. You know, you're, you're like you were just, Anna was just saying, you don't have the knowledge of something and you get, gather whatever you have to make your decision in your head, then that's all you have. Once you gain new information, you can change your decision. You can stop being a heretic if you don't want to be, or you can go back to that. But um, it all has to do with what research you do in your own mind or where, or with other people. If you talk to somebody else, oh, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it, it informs our you know choices and decisions. Yeah. So you can see that CNC is really, uh, like I said, it's 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 meant to ask the questions again, give them life empowerment tools. And so it's an it's a it's a it's it's a it's it's a congregational development tool. It's a leadership tool. It's an empowerment. It's a youth empowerment tool. So again, in all these sessions, they they have again homework. They have uh, engaging questions. There are activities and points of reflection, and not and like I said, the activities do vary from module to module. There is a service project uh, linked into in, into the into the youth version. So there's a lot of different components that that kind of I think make it for a very well-rounded experience. And then again, there's a retreat at the end, uh, which which I know that our, our youth at St. John's are just really always thrilled about going and really love that that weekend together. We, we take them up to our Bishop's Ranch and uh, 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 and they, yeah, they just have a, have a, have a ball with it. Um, before, and there's always a closing prayer and the closing prayer is different. It's a different style each time. But before I do that, because uh, I want to close this off with the closing prayer, I just want to, I'm going to throw it out there. Are there any questions that you have that I can answer about CNC? I just have some sort of a, well, I, you answered the question about Zoom. I was wondering if, because my parish leaders are saying we must, we must meet in person we have to have safe safe church training which we do and um i just wondered um so you're using zoom but you're also using in in person when when it's safe to do i mean is that obviously right 
And right. You can, do, you can use this on a tablet or whatever if you want to or not um, and, and adapt to that kind of thing. And the right. other, my other question was about off-site classes. You know, if we are, someone suggested, one of the parents suggested that we have a, a picnic um, because we haven't seen each other and, you know, with, with protocols and all that, but outdoors, um, like five to seven in the evening, but spend one hour doing a class. Um, and then the second hour, you know, the families are all there could um, share a meal. And sure. I don't know if that's some, is that something that sounds like it just, if it's in okay and, you know, I don't know. I think, I think, I think, I think, I think, you know, you work with whatever best context you are, you know, definitely you're going to want to follow whatever uh, uh, safety protocols your church has put in place along with your county guidelines or anything like that. But, uh, you know, uh, certainly, you know, uh, what they say is outdoors is better than indoors. So I think you could, you could totally, uh, I could totally imagine you doing this kind of picnic style or if your church has a nice patio and you could you could just use the outside walls and put the stickies up on the on the on the outside right. walls and so there's yeah. all sorts of ways you can try to do it safe and try to even social distance and and put the protocols that work best for your church if, if you uh, for those in-person gatherings I, you know because again you could you or, you know you could also do where you do again some of them online and then you could do some of those in person and that way you're 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 you're, you're lessening and so you're going to want to figure out again what works best for your particular uh church i think right and that's that's what we were doing i just wanted to check with you so i can so i can tell those powers that be that you know this is uh you know this is okay it's it's adapting you know absolutely absolutely so and and I, I kudos I like I like the idea of having food afterwards <laughs> with, with the families. That's that. Who doesn't like that, right? <laughs> any any other questions? Um, I am not that familiar with the curriculum. In fact, I'm not familiar with the curriculum. Um, a component that my parents are interested in, and that I'm curious about is, um, does it address anything about um, like bodies and sexuality, or does that something I need to do separately? Because the J2A revised has integrated some of that. Again, it's not a competition. Right, I'm just trying right, to figure right, out. Right. Like, it doesn't, it, 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 there's really not a lot around sexuality itself. It's something we've talked about doing um, uh, in kind of our next phase of revisions, because we're also doing that, and we also want to uh, uh, you know, it hasn't been official, like, like I said, we're just in the very, but we're also wanting to go back through the curriculum and where we want to also look at through racial lenses to make sure it doesn't look like a completely white privileged curriculum and all sorts of things. So, so we're, we're, we're also wanting to tie some of those in our, in our next development for the next CNC uh, release. So those are some things we're working on, but right now, no, it doesn't really address those specific things. Uh, you're like it, it pretty much sticks to your typical confirmation topic. So it, it's going to start off again with with just what is the concept of spirituality? You're looking at belief systems. Uh, and and um, let me uh, let me just kind of pull up here so that way I can kind of show you what I what it looks like when you look at all 20 modules. Uh, and it's in my download here. Uh, so, um, all right, so what I'm doing, it, okay, so we do a share screen and you'll see it. And so, a, a, a 20 module CNC and don't feel like you have to do all the modules you can do as many modules as few as modules as you want to make your program you know we do CNC as almost a, a school year length at, at St. John's but I know churches that look the bishop's coming in three months we just need <laughs> and so you just take you take whatever you need to make it work for you um so so uh you have your interest session your interest session that's that's going to be just kind of getting familiar with the program explaining how it works to them you're going to establish group norms uh then you start getting uh in into so some of the uh the basics you know here meeting your mentor uh uh learning a little bit again about spirituality as today we just did the heretics are us 
then we start talking about scripture and prayer and then we go into uh, uh, church history and the Nicene Creed. Uh, uh, pain to power, that is actually kind of designed to be an instructed Eucharist and about healing in the church. So like sometimes it's very appropriate to bring someone who's maybe been an AA to come talk about their experience of empowerment. And then you tie that into an instructional Eucharist format. Um, uh, uh, in, in the Nicene Creed, another example is they write their actual, they, one of the assignments is to write your own creed as a group. They have to convene as the council of the church. Um, I, I, how we help, uh, so we start talking about our service projects. Uh, we, 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 we start uh, delving into scripture. How does the Bible look? You start talk, talking about sacraments. Now, some of these, right now I've got the Lutherans open. So some of this is going to be uh, specific for Lutheran, uh, but but uh, the, some of these modules would be different again with the Episcopal version or the Methodist version. Um, and so it just kind of leads into that. There's also a segment where they are supposed to, uh, uh, the World Council of Religions, where they're supposed to do a report and get to know of another religion other than Christianity. Uh, again, it's kind of hard to know what you believe if you don't know what others believe first, you know, so yeah. we encourage kind of an interfaith look at, and so you are looking at, you know, Islam and, 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 and some of the Asian, uh, different religions. And so we have like a list of like more than a dozen of those. Cool. Um, and that, that's kind of, so that's kind of how it, how it, how it, how the program completely builds up, uh, to in up to the point where, you're, you're basically reviewing that baptismal uh, covenant and then yep. do you, are you ready to confirm or not to be yeah. confirmed, you know? Okay. Um, would you mind terribly emailing me the first one, the intro? Would that be possible? Yeah, I can send you the intro. Okay, I'll just give you my email address. I might even have it. I'm sh you, you may. Yeah, yeah, I have it because it, you're, you're, on, you're registered on this class today, awesome. so yeah. And then uh, any other questions I can answer before we do this closing prayer? This might be a strange question. Um, you mentioned service projects. Mm -hmm. Are they, are they, um, like what, what types of projects would they have to do? Are they COVID uh, protocol friendly? You know, like. That is going to be, you know, every, it doesn't, we don't tell you what to do for the project. We kind of, kind of give you some guidelines, but that can be whatever. Okay. I mean, it's really for the youth to discern. It could be a cleanup at the beach. It could be. Oh, okay. You know, yeah. It's, it's just, it's just to engage them in some sort of service project. So, uh, so the service project is different every year at St. John. So, uh, yeah. Okay. Thank you. So yes, def definitely find something COVID friendly. <laughs> uh, so uh, anything, any other questions? All right, so I'm gonna do us, lead us through this prayer. I, lo I, I love this prayer because it requires a little bit of movement. Um, so the first thing I want you to do, and this is gonna be kind of uh, meant as a meditation. I want you to just take your hands and clasp them and then lay them in your lap. And I want you to close your eyes with your uh, clenched hands together as a fist. What is it you're holding on to? Is there something that is knotting you up inside? Is there something you don't want to let uh, go of? Is there something you're struggling with? Is there some choice you need to make? Is there something you don't want anyone to see? Is there something you don't want God to see? Whatever it is, notice it is there. Notice what it feels like without judgment or blame, simply observing and allowing the knowledge of what you're holding on to come to the surface. And if you are not sure what it is, that is fine. Simply notice it is there. And now what I want you to do is to take your hands and open them and you just kind of lay them and lay them down. It may be that you don't feel you're ready to do that and that's okay. You can go through this whole meditation with your fists clenched, but know what you uh, know that you can open your hands whenever you're ready. When you have unclenched your fists, notice what it feels like. Does it feel freeing? Does it feel scary? 
Does it feel like nothing is there? What's in your hand now? And when you're ready, I want you to take your hands and push them out front of you. And we're pushing whatever your hand is holding towards God. Whatever was worrying you or scaring you or tying you up in knots, whatever you were carrying with you, whatever you were afraid of to let other people see, push it towards God and let God catch it. Let God take whatever was from you and let your hands be empty. And now what I want you to do is take your one hand and put it over the other and just hold it there. And we keep our, our palms facing upwards with one hand over it. And now that your hands are empty, allow God to put a gift into your hands. This may be a gift of encouragement. It may be a challenge or an instruction. It may be a new perspective. It may be a message of love. It may be what you need to make the choices that are ahead of you. Maybe you don't know what it is or you're not sure anything is there and that's okay. But whatever it is that God wants to give you, allow God to place it in your hands. What does it feel like? And how does it make you feel? Take a few moments and simply notice whatever is going on for you. And when you're ready, take, the, take those hands and cut as they're cupped and bring them up to your heart. And press the gift that God is giving you into your heart. Seeing this gift entering into your body, traveling through your bloodstream, what does it feel like? Allow God's gift to spread through you. If you don't feel like you have received a gift or are not sure if you want to receive the gift, you can keep standing with your hands open, or if you wish, press your open hand to your heart. It may be that you discover something in that movement that you didn't find in your open hand. And finally, when you're ready, spring your hands up and lift them up to God as we give thanks and offer thanks. Whether it is for the gift you have received this evening or for something or anything else, or we use this gesture to offer thanks to God for anything you wish. When you have offered whatever thanks you wish, please live quietly and go with God. I want to thank you for coming. And if you have any questions after this, feel free to email me or myself or call my cell, uh, it, which is listed on the website. And I'll be happy to answer any questions you have. And thank you for coming. Thank you so much. Have a good night. Have a blessed evening, everybody. Good night. Thank you, John.